There are many ways to enlarge a picture so you can see it better. I count three methods that I would normally use. One is a card window, another is a popover, and the third is to move outside of FileMaker and open it in the native application. So let's talk about each one of these methods. The card window we've already done, and you know what a card window does. If you come over here and you click on here, you get a card window for subtasks. I could put a big giant picture in here, but it's going to be limited by how big I can make the card window. In other words, how big is the window that encloses this card window. It's also a lot of work. I have to actually make a layout. I have to put all the fields on there and store that layout and remember it's connected to this and you know it just it just it's a lot of extra schema that I don't necessarily want to put in there. But it does keep you inside FileMaker, which is something you want to consider. I don't usually try to leave FileMaker if I can help it. It's just a bad experience. If you open up another app, it sometimes doesn't work out so well. Now we also have done a popover. Take a look at this. We can do a popover. This is a lot less work. So we can make a popover and put in a big container version of that container field and it will show that picture bigger. It's as simple as that. The problem with this is it's also limited by the file, the window size at that moment. So the popover is not going to get any bigger than this real estate here. It's going to get cut off if it's bigger than that. I'm going to go for a third method since we've already done a card window, we've already done a popover. This should be fairly straightforward if that's the approach you want to take but I'm going to choose to open it up in the native application that's set as the default on your system software. Very simple to do. Well, it's not, I wouldn't say simple. It requires a few things, but I do it all the time, so it has become simple. So we're going to go into our script workspace, make ourselves a new script, and say picture open. And what we need to do is we need to put this picture on the hard drive, essentially export it. So we're going to use the export field content script step. Don't care whether we have on or off here um, because you're never going to see this dialog anyhow. So we'll say specify a target field. That's going to be from documents pictures. And we're going to choose that container. And then we're going to specify the output. And I'm going to put in here dollar sign path as well as automatically open the file. Very, just check this box right here. You'll see it. There's also create email with files attachment. So now we've got it exporting, but it doesn't, this dollar sign path has to be defined. So we're going to put it above here and say set variable. And set variable is a great little script step. It allows you to specify a spot in memory with a name where this uh, value is going to be stored. It'll stay in there uh, as long as you want, uh, depending on what type of variable you choose. Now I'm going to choose a dollar sign, a single dollar sign, but you could do two dollar signs. They mean different things. The first one is a local variable, meaning that once the script is done running, that value is out of memory. If you put two dollar signs in front of your name, that means it's going to stay until you close the FileMaker file, until the session ends. So I don't really need it to be op uh, available that long. Only one script step is, once it gets down to here, then I'm set. So I'm going to say dollar sign path. We're going to say get temporary path. Now I'm choosing this path called the temporary path rather than the get desktop path or the get documents path because this is a hidden path. You can't see it. All I want to do is open it. I don't want to clutter up their hard drive. I don't want to put it in the documents folder or on the desktop. I could and it would work just the same. But this one's great because it hides it from them. And when you quit FileMaker, it deletes the content so you don't have all this stuff inside of this your hard drive that you, that you don't even know is there. So we'll say concatenate that with. Remember the get container attribute. We're going to use that one again. Take the, I don't like these spaces. I always remove them. So there we go. The field is going to be documents, pictures, container, and then we're going to choose take that space out of there, and then put quote file name quote, and that'll put everything in there. You know, all the everything, the whole picture name, including the extension. So 
that's it. That's all you need. You just need to, this is probably the hardest part, knowing how to save something to somewhere on your hard drive. And you can do lots of different things. There's a lot of get functions out there. You might want to look at them. But the most common, again, are get temporary path, get desktop path, and get documents path. But there's other ones that are out there that may be useful for you. So we'll save this, close it, go into layout mode. Duplicate this button here. I'll just use the keyboard command. There we go. I think it's lined up. There we go. Lined up now. I like the way it sits in the portal. We're good. I'm going to choose a different script. Picture open. We don't need that. I don't want to confuse anybody with the optional script parameter, so remember to move those if you're duplicating things. And let's see where this is saying. That's good. I think it's all good. Just need to change the icon. And let's see if we can find a good icon for opening. And I have one in mind. It's just a matter of where it is in this whole scheme of icons here. I really wish I had a filter here to find these things. And I think I found it right there. Good. Close it. And I would probably add a tooltip because it's not totally clear the first time you, uh, you use this. We'll just say open. Doesn't have to be any more detailed than that. You could, but uh, I'm going to be very, you know, very quick on this and and just put a, a small, you know, a short name in there. Okay, so there's my open button. Let's see what happens. It exports it, and then you can see it opens up in my default application called Preview. So it'll open up in something. You'll have something as the default, and it's a great little way because now I have all of the features inside of this program to go ahead and manipulate this photo if I need be. Now remember, you're not manipulating the original. The original is still stored inside FileMaker here. Even if it was on external storage, you're not manipulating. So, you know, you'll have to re-import it if you want to manipulate it. And you can certainly do that, but most times you just want to look at it. But sometimes just realize what the difference is about making the pluses and minuses, the disadvantages and advantages of every technique. So, like I said, a card window is lots of work, but it keeps you in FileMaker. Popover is easier and keep you in FileMaker, which is nice. But it, you know, both of those techniques are limited by how big you can get it. Now, when you open it up in a native application, it's a little bit more work, but you get all those tools. And this can be especially important when we do the PDFs, as you'll see, because the PDF reader, you know, Adobe Reader, whatever, has a lot more features than FileMaker, as we've already shown. And so opening it up in the native application, you know, Adobe Reader, or whatever it might be, that PDF is going to have a lot more. You can do searches and things like that, things you can't do with an interactive container inside FileMaker. So this is my preferred method right here. Even though it takes you out of FileMaker, it's easy. You can copy and paste it, make a few changes. You know, it's not very difficult to do. There's no, there's no objects on there. There's just a button and, and a script, and that's it.